Hi and welcome to my video on using Apple's main stage. In my case here I'm using main stage 2. Uh, some folks may be on main stage uh, 1 still and there are differences between the two but for uh, the purpose of this video we're going to be talking about main stage 2. Now what I'm going to do today is uh, focus on main stage 2 stomp boxes and how you can control those stomp boxes externally using a MIDI device and in my case it's going to be the Behringer FCB 1010 it could be any MIDI device whatsoever but I'm using the FCB uh, 1010 so what we will primarily focus on is how to switch the stomp boxes on and off which is one of the most popular things that we would want to do so the first thing that I've done here is I've just brought up a uh, uh, the standard uh, single amp with multiple patches uh, template here and we'll just use as a this is a bit of a, a bit of a working example so if you just take a quick look at the screen here uh, I'm going to focus on controlling these four stop boxes now in this case that you see right here in the default patch there's um, there's two stop boxes and a couple of amp controls so I'm gonna find a patch a little bit later on where I, I have four stop boxes in line across here so now I already know that I'm gonna be using uh, four stop boxes so that means and oh by the way I want to control those independently and what I'm gonna need for that is four separate CCs to use in order to control those those devices. So really the first step in the process is I'm going to configure my MIDI controller and as I mentioned before it's my FCB 1010 and for that I use a very handy editor called IFCB which I have right here and let me just zoom this in so you can see it a little bit better. So the editor here will allow me to graphically go in and program the FCB 1010 as opposed to doing it manually with all the stomping up and down and pressing and everything else. It's a little bit of a hassle. I'd much rather use the software editor and it works uh, very well. So as I said before, we're going to look at mapping four different foot switches here uh, for those each or for each of the different stomp boxes. So I, I think in this case I'm going to click down to bank uh, zero. Let me just click down here. So zero, and I'm going to use foot switches two, three, four, and five for this. Now you can use anything you want, any foot switch, any bank, no problem. You just go ahead and choose whatever you want. So let's just start. And the first thing I'm going to do is click uh, foot switch two of bank zero. And as you can see, there's really not much programmed within two. There's only the volume and expression pedal right here. So I want to look at sending uh, a CC value for bank zero zero foot switch two. So I'll get down here to the control change area and say yes I want to send control change one and I'm going to use uh, something that's kind of logical to our sequence here. So let me say uh, we're on number two, we're on foot switch two. So let me choose 22 for that guy. Okay, so you can see here I've said, yeah, yes, I do want to use the first control change and I want to use 22. I don't need to send a value in this instance because main stage is just going to recognize the fact that it, uh, that it received something on CC22. I'm going to do the same thing for the next foot switch. So let's go to number three and let's just make this logical and I'll use 23 for this which I've done there and let's just follow on with our same process for number four and let's just use 24 that way we can we can remember which CC's are mapped to each foot switch a little bit easier and then on number five I'll click on five again and let me say 25 and you know what I'm gonna do I'm going to send another CC on that one 26 
that'll just allow us a little more control. So what will happen in this case here uh, for foot switch number five, it'll send both 25 and 26. Okay, so if we just recap what we've done here, if we look at foot switch number two, let me just click on that. You can see that's using CC22. I'll click on three. It's using CC23. I'll just zoom in here a little bit so you can see it. Click on four. There's 24 and five. As we already talked about, we'll be sending 25 and 26. Okay, so the next thing that I would do at this point, I would uh, update my FCB 1010. And the way you do that is by clicking this send button right here. And then I have to just get through the normal process of making sure that the FCB 1010 is in SysX receive mode. i just do, do that. Okay, we're good to go. And I'll press send. And now my FCB 1010 is mapped. Okay. Now, what, uh, what I often do, just to double check my programming, is I use... Um, something like MIDI monitor, which is right here. I'll just bring this up. And this is just simply monitoring uh, my MIDI in, and it will tell me which events that it received, if any. So right now I'm going to press uh, or to stand on um, bank 00, zero foot switch 2, and we should get value 22 if everything went right. There you go. So controller 22. I'm going to step on number three, we should get 23, which we did. And I'm going to step on four, we should get 24, which we did. And I'm going to press foot switch five now, and we should get 25 and 26. So we did 25 and 26. So we're good there. And let me just clear that off. So what that essentially means is that, um, is that we have been able to successfully program our FCB 1010 with those values. So now that the FCB 1010 has been programmed, we need to go into main stage now and start looking at, as to how to map that within main stage.